Hello everyone, Peter here, and this week I'll be covering stone textures. So first off, create a square file, 2048 by 2048, and we'll uh, begin by taking a small brush and drawing the outlines of our stone shapes. So I'm imagining this is a very natural stone. It's um, Everything is very compacted because of the immense pressure that the stones are putting on each other. So. Um, we're not going to use a big brush this time to, to space out all our details. And um, don't spend too long on this, don't think too hard about it. Um, collect references though if you're unfamiliar with, uh, well, always collect references actually, <laughs> but um, it's, uh, I definitely recommend it whether or not you're familiar with stones. Um, now from here, we're actually going to just be um, taking an early uh, look at the filter and offset. So go up to filter, other and offset, uh, 1024 by 1024, since that's half our image size. And I just need you to blend the seams together. So this is just like we do in the other tutorials, but you want to uh, start this process as early as possible, just so you know your overall texture is going to tile nicely. So go repeat the filter, offset it and from here uh, we're just going to add shadows and highlights to the edges to show depth so if you've been following the other tutorials in us there's a lot of similarities um, with different textures um, we always start with these basic steps so the um, I've chosen my light source to be coming from the upper left hand corner and that means the shadows will be on the opposite side of each piece of stone so um, these are just protruding stones from maybe, uh, they could be cobblestones at this point, they could be uh, parts of a cliff wall, but either way, um, you, you still want to focus on those fundamentals of getting the, getting the volume of these pieces down and making sure your lighting is solid. So this order, the order that you go about um, coloring the stones, that doesn't matter so much. And as you see, I'm flipping back and forth between uh, my image and my references because it's important to me to, to try and uh, replicate actual stone and uh, other, a specific uh, style of texture. So um, I'll see if I can share my, uh, those files too. Uh, I might start sharing those files on the YouTube uh, description so you all can have access to those and those are just they'll be free to use it's um, you're welcome to use any of the, the textures that I've made here as long as you credit me but um, the idea here is to be able to make your own so uh, anyways I'm just kind of hitting these edges with the uh, with a lighter color um, since they'll be particularly reflective and um, I made I did a similar step with uh, in painting metal but as we'll notice with rock it's not as shiny and reflective as uh, something like iron or steel so there will still be a highlight on those edges and they'll, they'll still be a little bit rounded but it's not nearly as um, specular and glossy as um, the metal would be so from here, um, you notice we have a lot of big shapes, so we want to use a smaller brush to break up the large shapes that we see throughout this image. And there are a variety of um, ways that you can go about this. I, I tackled it by saying, oh, you know, maybe the, the rock has been chipped away in spots, so you kind of have these layered sections going on. So I imagined drawing like little almost like little rocks on top of the rocks uh, little um, slices of stone on top of the stone and um, but anyways from here we'll go into a separate layer and this is what really defines the 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 look of the stone so use a soft brush to paint some gradients and um, You'll want to clean up those edges, so don't forget to clean up the edges, and that's the reason we're doing this all in a separate layer. So you can erase any excess gradient that is uh, 
overflowing from the top of the stones. And this is just to, to show uh, some more lighting information, provide some more lighting for your texture. And you're creating uh, a sense of depth again. So it will make the, uh, the stone feel like it has little areas that are more elevated or areas that are uh, more divots that the light can't quite get to. So that'll just add another layer of realism to our texture. And we don't do this with the other, um, the other textures because, like for example, metal. Metal is very flat and smooth, ideally. Um, or wood, wood planks are very smooth and flat. Whereas the rock and the stone um, in this image would be very uh, distressed, very natural, and it hasn't been quite so sanded down. So um, definitely make sure to uh, merge your layers because if you do any sort of uh, offsetting to check the tiling, it's going to uh, not work like you expect. It'll only offset that one layer. So after that, we zoom in and start refining our lines. So what you can see me doing here is just um, because we work so far away, of course, our lines aren't going to be as refined. They're going to be a little bit sketchy, a little bit, uh, um, they're not very clean. So we want to zoom in now at this step and see this is like, what, nine minutes into the tutorial, but um, we want to uh, stay as zoomed out as possible just for the sake of um, getting a good feel of the overall texture but once you have a solid foundation to work from like by this point then you're more than welcome to go in and zoom in and refine your details so i'm just taking a, a very small brush this is like a, a three or four in some cases size three or four brush and i'm going in and cleaning up the lines making the lines extra smooth and that's just so uh it'll it'll look nice i mean eventually um if you lower your resolution your texture resolution ah, bleh, sorry <laughs> texture resolution then it will be um maybe 1020 uh sorry not uh 1024 by 1024 is still pretty big you want like um, 256 by 256 for textures so that'll end up being um, very much compressed compared to what you're painting at but I'm just uh, from here I'm adding additional faces so I'm imagining uh, there are parts where the the rock has broken off and um, I want to add that additional level of detail by saying oh um, if the rock chips off at that specific point, it's going to be a little bit lighter. Or if the rock chips off near the bottom part of each stone, it, it's going to be a little bit darker. And you see me drawing out some lines, kind of figuring out what the faces of this, uh, this particular um, section is going to look like. And um, anything facing the light is going to be a little bit brighter. So you see I painted that highlight there. Or anything um, that's facing the other direction is going to be a little bit darker because the light can't quite get there. So it's uh, nothing super complicated here. And um, a lot of the painting process is actually very similar throughout different types of textures. So hopefully if uh, you've been following the series, then you can start to understand that it's actually all about observing um, the substance, observing the material itself, and figuring out how to use um, your existing knowledge to render it. And um, I'll say that there, uh, the difference between um, the difference between some very stylized textures and the difference between uh, very realistic textures is just that there. Um, you spend more time rendering it or you use photo textures to, to help you get a more realistic look um, because from here if we kept polishing it and polishing it we could actually eventually get some sort of um, we could get some sort of realistic texture 
but I'm mostly focused on like a World of Warcraft style uh, stylized painting. Now, uh, there was a really good question by uh, somebody in the comments. Uh, Gnome MG post uh, mentioned that. Um, well, he emailed me and said that um, he noticed that there are a lot of companies that do um, they use sculpted textures. So, like they'll they'll sculpt a base or something in ZBrush and then bring it into Photoshop. And he was curious about um, how to replicate that workflow uh, w without the sculpting part and if that's even possible. Um, and the answer to that is. Yes, it's, it's possible. It'll, it takes more time though because um, the sculpting software like ZBrush, is, it's really there to give additional lighting information. Because um, you, can, you can get however clean of edges you want using your paintbrush in Photoshop, but it's primarily about the um, getting normal maps and specular maps, um, which you would insert into game engines. So it's there, those are all tools to help speed up the process. It's not cheating. It's not a. You don't have to think of it as a, in, an inferior form of art or anything. It doesn't make you any less artistic. It's just uh, another method of speeding up the process. And um, you can totally act. You can totally create those maps um, by hand, but it's it'd be a pain in the butt. So that's why a lot of the times we use three D base. Um, and does that mean that painting is not as important? Well, no, painting is still very important and you need to have those skills, but it's, um, it's just another tool. So from here, uh, you just see me doing, a, I added another layer here and I'm hitting the, the stones with um, a bit of a highlight gradient, just to say, um, to show that it's more protruding into the air, and you've got this, uh, the sun is hitting it, uh, the light is hitting it um, stronger in that direction. And the the amount of detail that you want to go into this depends on, really depends on what you're doing. So at by this point, I decided, oh, okay, this is going to be something between natural rock and cobblestone. It's not completely man-made or anything. Or perhaps your game needs, um, it might need maybe like a sandstone type of rock. So instead of a bluish gray color, you might choose a, um, like a tan, a yellowish, yellowish orange tan color. Um, but you can't simply change the color of the rock and call it sandstone. For example, um, sandstone would be a lot smoother than uh, this type of rock. Maybe this is shale or granite or something. And you wouldn't have so many broken up bits and pieces. So you're going to want to do your research, look into how that type of rock forms and how it occurs in nature, because that's going to determine how you paint it. And um, something like a sedimentary rock would have lots of uh, striations, it would have lots of layers, and you would paint it almost more like wood um, with uh, which you can you can reference the wood tutorial I did uh, last year, but it's got um you would do lots of different layers and banding, whereas here we're breaking it up into chunks because of the way um, we want the rock to look broken apart, and um, so there's more facets here. Uh, I'm just painting more um, more broken bits and uh, faces to the rock because. Um, ultimately it's gonna be it's not perfect it's not um, it's not shaped by a mason or anything this is um, it might be worn down by nature but it's going to chip and break off and nobody's there to polish it so uh, a lot of this is adding um, some distress adding some uh, some texture to it as well and you'll notice some lines you don't want to clean up. Some lines are, are just more of um, there to add uh, that chaotic detail. So 
that's that's the level that you clean it up is up to you and I'll actually go into depth here some more depth at the end of this tutorial about uh, uh, using a scatter brush to add some more um, detail but that's uh, that, that's like a very last step that's uh, you don't usually start your textures with that that kind of uh, brushwork and uh, like I've said before this this whole uh, texture series I want to do um, with a hard round brush or soft round brush but just the, the basic default Photoshop brushes because I want to show you guys that this is uh, something that you don't need fancy tools to do. You can use uh, Photoshop right out of the box. So from here, I think one of the things that you can look at is um, trying to define what the what's going on in the like those those little crack areas. So. Um, you can try and break up some of that um, the little dark parts with um, additional stonework or like little pebbles um, try to imagine what would fall uh, what would fill those gaps um, maybe it's grass so um, it might be fun to do a sort of hybrid grass rock texture grass and stone because uh, that's where you would have things like moss blades of grass growing um, but this is pr it's pretty simple and monochromatic as far as stones go because we want to focus uh, primarily on one texture at a time here but it might be fun to do some more of these with um, showing like oh here's how you can combine them here's how you can combine different types of painting and if you wanted to actually you could introduce um, different colors into the rock so uh, you would do that by creating a new layer go to new layer and maybe change the the blending mode on the right hand side um, you see right now it's normal so you can change it from normal to color color mode and then add whatever colors that uh, you would like and um, <laughs> if you see me flipping back and forth between uh, internet and discord um, Photoshop's been having some problems today is is kind of odd. I um, I notice I think around uh, April twelfth here, uh, Windows just pushed an update um, that actually broke the Photoshop uh, brush capabilities because um, it's they what they did was they changed the Windows Ink brush um, so that it uh, would function as a pan or move tool, and um, as you can imagine, that's not what we want when we select the the paintbrush we want it to be plain down color and uh it was uh, it was inconvenient for quite a few artists out there so um don't <laughs> i don't recommend uh, updating to the, the latest um version of windows until they fix that but um, there are plenty of workarounds now because uh the internet is an awesome place and people have figured things out so <laughs> um Thanks for that. Um, but I was just warning some other artists on Discord. And I'm like, hey, if you've got deadlines coming up, you might want to be careful about this. So um, there's the... Um, so I'm refining that bottom edge there. As you go along, you're going to realize uh, some rocks or some, some of the pieces of stone don't quite fit as well as you'd like. And it's never too late to, to make an edit and change something. Um, if you see, oh, this is this form isn't perfect. This isn't what I, um, it's, it's too far away from the other pieces of stone and it's creating this really big gap um, because it's, you should really try and fix those things before you go to stick the, the texture in engine and things get all nasty when you tile it. Um, it's, this is a stage where it's still very easy in Photoshop to, to blend these things and you haven't added a lot of texture yet and in general um, you want to fix those things first but I'm starting to work on um, this uh, developing more of these cracks here so um, you always want uh, 
well, I've, I've said this before, but you want to re I want to reiterate the point that um, anytime there's a, a dark edge, you'll have um, you can contrast it with um, a highlighted edge. So you see in the areas where there's a lot of cracks, I take the that lighter uh, gray color and I put it uh, right alongside the, the edge of the crack. And it's um, this is definitely a stage where you want to think about breaking those uh, big shapes of rocks up even more. So I've painted the, the sections on top and now we're going to zoom in and tackle the, uh, the cracks. So taking the darkest color that we've got, uh, notice we're not even using black, it's more of like a 80% uh, 80%, 80 black. Um, we're going to define these, these little chipped bits and crack the rock. Um, try to, trying to think of how it would naturally split. So um, little edges, little uh, corners of the rock would be vulnerable and they might break off and create, have, you might see those little cracks. Um, if it's a particularly long piece of rock or stone, it, it's going to crack down the middle um, horizontally rather than vertically. But you'll see that like edges will break off, and you'll have like little sections of rock um, that chip off. But it might not have. Um, you don't want to put too many, otherwise it, <laughs> it'll look kind of pulverized. But it's uh, it's just generally. Um, this is a good way to add some detail and interest to your texture. Um, and you wanna wanna make sure they're evenly dispersed across your entire texture because if you go too overboard with it, it's going to look very overworked. It's going uh, when, when you go to tile it, it will just um, those areas that are particularly dark will stand out too much and then you won't be able to uh, or, well, then you'll be able to see the difference um, and see the tiling, and that is not what we want. Now, um, this little section here, I'm not a huge fan of um, with this uh, <laughs> this little um, crack that I have running along the bottom of that rock, so I'm not sure I, I would necessarily replicate that, but um, one thing you can see here when I have zoomed in is... Uh, you don't want to leave any corners of those cracks um, sharp. They're going to be a little bit beveled, so um, you want to round out the edges a little bit. Um, just because if it's uh, such a sharp edge, it would have chipped off, it would have uh, worn down a little bit, and it will look very um, unfinished if you just draw a line straight through the your rock and say okay it's done versus uh, rounding off the edges a little bit so uh, I keep referencing uh, that one rock texture because it's um, the artist did a, a very good job with making sure they're um, with making sure it looks realistic while still being somewhat stylized and here you, d you definitely want to make sure you, uh, if you haven't done so already, you want to blend um, those seams together again. So uh, remembering we go up to filter, other offset, offset it by half the width of the image. And um, the sooner you do this, the better. I, I kind of waited till the end and see, now I have a, a lot to fix. Um, but if you do it throughout the painting, then you have uh, a lot less issues. Um, but since we did this at the beginning, it's not a problem because then, for the most part, the rocks all match up. So from here, it's just a matter of uh, isolating, okay, which rocks are missing some detail? Which rocks need some more cracks? Um, is there anywhere that's uh, sticking out like a sore thumb? Because then we want to fix it. And I, I just... Uh, undid the offset or redid the offset rather so uh, this is the scatter brush part so you can create a scatter brush with your simple round brush by going into the brush settings and then adding scatter so you just check check the, the box that says scatter 
and check the box that says color dynamics. And color dynamics lets you um, uh, jitter between uh, multiple colors, so your spots can have a little bit of color variation. And the uh, the you can play around with the size or amount. And just generally, we're going to be adding some uh, detail with the scatter brush. So we might have like these speckles. So we're going to create a new layer and um, you'll want to set it to multiply um, or you could you could play around with just how uh, how you want those to show up sometimes overlay might work better or screen might work better but I found in this case multiply uh, worked best and uh, you will want to um, turn down the opacity so it's it's not such a glaring change but this just adds uh, another level of uh, detail and realism to our painting so you can do that as much as you want uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be circles or anything but that's just uh, what, what, what we can do with the, the hard round brush and you might undo or you might go to filter offset uh, make sure everything is has enough speckles but uh, don't forget to merge all your layers before you do that um, and then finally we're going to go to image adjustments and I wanted to do um, edit the the contrast I wanted to make it um, a little bit brighter a little bit more blue so you can always go to brightness contrast and hue and saturation for that um, but that's completely up to you and then as always if you really want to you can um, follow along with this last step so edit define pattern and then um, this is how you can test your uh, how to make it tileable. So then you'll go layer, new fill layer, pattern, and then selecting your texture. Now you can see what it looks like at uh, different scales. So of course, if you zoom out a lot, it's going to look kind of icky. But um, in general, there we go. That's uh, that's what we've got for the stone texture. Let me know uh, what other textures you'd like to see in the comments below, and I'll see you next week.